Kia ora, welcome to Bus Days. I've just taken delivery of my most exciting AliExpress haul so far. I'll show you. It's these um, light fittings with a cool little pull turn on and off. No, I'm just kidding. They have just arrived. Um, they came really, really fast out of China and uh, really well packed. But that's actually not what I'm excited about at all. Um, in fact, what I am excited about, I didn't even get from AliExpress. Um, I've been, I've been considering buying these through AliExpress for quite some time. They're quite expensive and uh, I get worried whether or not I will be able to get them into the country but I've managed to find some locally at a great price so this here is a 12 volt 270 amp hour lithium battery oh. this is heavy as hell let's have a closer look at it so it's um, I, I, what they call a drop-in battery. Uh, it's got a um, it's got its own BMS system built in. Um, so it simply has two terminals, which outputs 12 volts. Got a little voltmeter on the side. Tells you that it's currently at 13.5, 13.4. It's got a little charging port, which seems a little weird. Um, and I know already that this contains 12 prismatic cells and that's what I want and I bought two of them so together that is 24 3.2 volt nominal uh, 90 amp hour prismatic cells LifePo 4 uh, or, 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 um, or lith lithium iron phosphate so they're pretty cool cells now uh, I, I, the cheapest I've found them is a little over 100 bucks each plus freight and then we've got GST and customs fees and all that sort of junk if they let them in the country at all they're quite hard to, tra to transport them around the world so this is a really good score and these come with a five year warranty which I will of course avoid the moment I tear the top off and pull them apart. So I can then reconfigure those 24 cells into uh, 3P8S or, or um, that is 3 cells parallel, 8 cells in series and what I get out of that then is a 24 volt, 24 volt battery um, or a 24 volt battery pack with uh, 270 amp hours of capacity which is which is almost um, almost seven kilowatt hours or something like that so it's a fair bit of grunt but before I can do any of that I need to rip these apart inspect the cells check that they're all in balance well, balance them as a as a full set because it's currently two smaller sets um, which will take quite a long time and then reassemble them into a new battery I'll also need to work out some sort of battery management system because the one that's in there is probably junk and um, not suited to a 24 volt setup anyway and then I can play with it and see how it goes in the bus so I'm dying to have a look inside. Um, first I'm going to get these scary looking terminals off. And I'm just going to tape up this positive just to make sure I can't accidentally short it out. make things a little more safe. Let's pull it apart. This screwdriver is particularly suited for electrical work because most of the shaft is covered in plastic 
So there's very limited opportunity to short something out. Interesting to note these screws are really loose and um, would probably have vibrated out in no time at all in a in a vehicle. What's under here? And under here, it's got a nice little insulating panel. So let's go in for a closer look. It's got these spaces which I guess are holding the, that insulation panel off of these bank of resistors. So it must be some sort of uh, passive balancing, some sort of passive balancing system. It's got a little LED that looks like it would indicate that the balance is active and a bunch of resistors to throw current across. Doesn't look too bad I suppose. So these will be going, I expect, to individual cells. Now, um, I'm not really that keen on the main cables, which is just a uh, one, two, six, which is really just six smaller wires soldered together to this really quite thin copper plate. Um, it's got a separate charging port, which I don't really know why. And the positive terminal is also similar six copper wires. Interesting. I guess the circuitry's in there. I haven't seen a fuse yet, but I haven't seen a fuse yet, but I expect there is one. That's quite a chunky diode. Let's see if we can have a look underneath this plate. Now that's what I'm after. So these are the cells, the individual cells with their little jumpers across. It's actually not a bad little setup in there. Um, it all looks a little light and uh, I'm really keen to get them apart. Obviously that's where the weight of the battery is. Hmm, pretty cool. So in here we have uh, three cells in parallel and four in series. That gives us the 12 volts or 13.2 or whatever it is. 13.2 nominal and um, 270 amperes. Alright, let's start pulling that apart. Now working around batteries can be kind of dangerous. Um, I mean I'm not talking about putting a little 9 volt battery on your tongue here. With these, there's some serious power here. Even a car battery, really quite dangerous. If you've ever dropped a tool on top of a car battery you can see how exciting that can get and how quickly things can go very very wrong. Lithium-ion batteries can um, give out their power a whole heap faster which means playing with something like this around the top of a battery is uh, not advisable. So I'm going to spend some time insulating my tools and uh, so these batteries are a pretty exciting topic for me. I've been looking forward to this bit um, of the build, uh, although not financially. And if it's exciting for you, then you won't want to miss my next video, so maybe um, you need to like and subscribe, press all the buttons, and uh, that little bell thing, is it down there? I don't know. There's a little bell thing. If you click on that, um, then it will let you know.
when I've posted the next video and uh, you can continue on this journey with me right now heading down the lithium iron phosphate path. Take care, I'll see you again soon. Matewa.